how did you because you you served also as a producer on this film so how did all writer. of this come together and the writer <laughs> oh it didn't mention that in the pr thing so so you yeah. wrote produced and starred in it yeah um so i had moved out to north carolina and took kind of a mini break from acting mm -hmm. and i really wanted to write and i just felt like i was at an age where there wasn't these roles where there were these strong, powerful women that were at my age range, they were either older or there's like, usually for women, there's like high school, college, and then it jumps to like young mom. And then there's these like few roles that are like doctors, nurses, lawyers, and cops for like early thirties mm -hmm. or late twenties. And so I was just like, I want to do something that's, like, strong and powerful. I love the horror genre. And um, I came up with this idea and was really excited about it. And my partner and I had written the script. And I funded the movie and we shot it. Um, I just wanted to make some, like, fun content, do something that was different and original. So, so when you decided that it was going to be a horror movie uh... – which did you try to did you pick like certain tropes that you wanted in there or did you just kind of just write it as just it's just horror i'm not going to go for like uh you know uh final final girl kind of thing or you know mass yeah. killer kind of thing yeah i wanted something more psychological mm -hmm. and i wanted something i wanted a story i didn't just want like boo scary Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want the quintessential, like, you know, glamorized killer and then the like over-sexualized girl. Mm -hmm. I wanted something different. Um, and the sex appeal and all that still is still in the script. Um, cause that's part of, you know, what, you know, the, the antagonist in the story at first and these girls and space be you know the quintessential idea of girls on a girl, girl's getaway trip mm -hmm. um and then you know it starts to flip and there's just a different dynamic and so when i was re like thinking of what kind of horror film i wanted to do i had the idea of just women empowerment and i love like you know witchcraft and astrology and all that is very interesting to me so I kind of wanted to go down that scale um and I was living in North Carolina so I kind of had this idea about these cultish men that were twisting um uh, biblical stories and sick phrases to um promote their ulterior motives um and so we tied that in in the opposite of religion the witchcraft and um made the storyline that's kind of where i came up with the idea at first when you wrote it did you have particular actors and actresses in mind for those roles um well scout compton who's in it who was um the lead in rob zombie's halloween is one of my um good friends and so i was envisioning her but i didn't know who the third would be um and I, you know, had similar traits and ideas of what this character, her name was Brooke, and what she brought into the story. But I just didn't know who who that character would be. Um, I just knew her traits. and But I definitely envisioned Scout from writing it from the beginning. And for the uh, for your antagonist, did you... Uh, when you were when you were casting that, what were you looking for in those in those actors so they would be adequately re, uh, reprehensible on screen? Um, it was kind of crazy. When I was in North Carolina, one of the bad guys um, is kind of more sweet or naive and doesn't really quite understand the situation he's in because that's been his like only and that's where he's only known and accepted in his life and so I was reading with a friend he was helping me with an audition when I was in North Carolina and he had never acted in his life and I was like wow you're incredible like you're a really good actor and he ended up being um 
him in the movie. He ended up being one of the brothers who was the naive and sweet kind of bad guy. Um, and it, I had no intention of doing that, but he was just so natural and so incredible. And we had him read for it and he just like blew us out of the water. So a lot of like magical and like unexpected things like that happened while we were filming. Um, and I think that was probably my favorite part of the casting process was finding Kip. His name's Noah Dane. He's incredible. Uh, what what kind of challenges did you face uh, getting this movie done? What, were there challenges oh in geographical or financial or anything like that? Yeah, we're an indie. <laughs> okay. it, yeah, all that stuff goes. But sometimes people like magically like fall into like these really great situations where like everything was fine. There were no problems. Everything was fine. I mean, we shot the whole film in 12 days. It's a full-length feature. So, I mean, that in itself. And when you're an indie, I mean, you don't have enough hands on deck. Mm -hmm. So everyone was, was wearing 18 hats, you know, and everyone was helping and doing whatever they could. And I'm just so grateful for how much support we had. Um, and the town that we shot in, in North Carolina, was so giving and so great and... I think that part was just wonderful. It was just the camaraderie and the community um, was so helpful and just wanted to see our dream come true. And But definitely the stress, I think, of just trying to get, because we did go through SAG, so, you know, you only have your eight-hour day with your actors and mm -hmm. um, just trying to stay shooting eight hours in 12 days of full feature is, like, crazy. <laughs> And plus, I was the writer, producer, and acted in it. And then one of our leads directed. So we all were just, like, wearing a lot of hats. So I think our thinking cap, like, we'd be in the scene. And then right when it was cut, it was like, okay, now I have to put on my other hat. And then check the gate and make sure everything's good before we move on. Um, that was pretty challenging, for sure. Since you were on such a tight schedule, did you have to do any day for night shots, or were you able to get both your day and night shots within those twelve days? Um, I think we did one day for night, and that was it. And then we took we did shot for six, took one day off, and then switched over to the night shoot. And when you're when you're in an indie situation, it's kind of it's it's stressful like you said but then you also have to like manage people in in a different way you have to make sure that they're all happy because if you have one uh -huh. guy that kind of goes a wall it just kind of ruins the whole thing so how did you manage to keep your uh -huh. cast and your crew all all in that that nice happy space i think cuz a lot of us were friends um and so we were all able to work together even when it was i mean it, we had days that was 25 degrees Mm -hmm. It was freezing and we were shooting at night, you know, throughout the night. Um, but we all knew what we were doing and we all knew what we signed up for. And so we all just worked and we never had anyone that there was never really, I mean, sometimes, you know, we'd get frustrated or, you know, there were times where we were all freezing, but we were all freezing together. So <laughs> It was like a team effort, so I think we all handled it really well, actually. There was never, because sometimes there's always usually that one person, but we we did great, and we're still all friends, so <laughs> I think we mastered it. <laughs> uh, going going forward in your career, do you think you'd like to shoot more in, in the southern part of the United States as opposed to in L.A.? Um, I think it has both have their benefits. Mm -hmm. um i think it's really it's easy to shoot in the south it's really rural and people are really excited about film but then there's also things where it is like getting extras and things in small towns like a lot of people don't care to be in a movie mm -hmm. <laughs> or don't have any experience so there's there's i think there's uh you hit problems in both locations but I think the South is beautiful and you can really put a ton of films there and be in, say you're in different parts of the world, but you're really in Atlanta or New Orleans or, you know, mm -hmm. North Carolina. So uh, yeah, I loved shooting in the South. Uh, was there a particular scene 
uh, whether one that you were in or one that one that you weren't in that was your favorite to to be a part of? Hmm. I think being in the bar was really fun just because there was music and we got to dance and um, I was teaching. I teach dance as well. And so I was able to put a lot of my dance students in it. And so they were all excited to be in a movie and be able to dance and perform. So that <laughs> felt really good um, to give that many people opportunities. Um, that was probably one of my favorites. But there's also a scene with Noah he plays Kib, um, where we're in the barn, and it's this very intimate and just beautiful scene. And his acting is so strong in it, and it was just so beautiful to watch on the opposite side to see him just blossom. And we got kind of this magical shot where you could see my reflection and my, like, my reactions in his glasses. And it was kind of just like an unexpected, beautiful thing that happened. So that probably was my most favorite. And he's just so such an incredible and natural actor that I think that's probably my favorite scene in the whole film. Uh, do any of the uh, the quote unquote uh, bad guys have any kind of redemption arc? I think Kib Noah's. He's the only redeem only one that semi-redeeming <laughs> <laughs> in the whole thing the other guys are just not great yeah <laughs> uh what's the uh what's the next project that that you're that you're going into after this one uh releases um i have a film that i did for apple called stars fell in alabama mm-hmm. and i know they're in post-production right now i don't think there's a release date yet but we filmed that actually in South Carolina and it's a really, really beautiful rom-com. It was really fun. I actually play the antagonist in it. Um, yeah. So that hopefully should be coming out soon. Uh, what's it like working on a production that's under Apple? Is it any different than, than any other studio? Um, it was really great. I think technically they haven't, it. it's not fully an Apple movie yet, but Robert Wyndham, who's like, he created Apple mm-hmm. streaming, the Apple streaming box. He wrote it and funded it. So I'm 90% sure it's going to end up on Apple, <laughs> on Apple TV. Um, they were great. I mean, they treated us so well. Food was amazing. They were so fun. I loved it. He was like such an incredible boss. All right, Jacqueline, uh, my last question, which is the most important one, is where and when will people be able to see uh, Getaway? Uh, April 14th, and it's going to be Google Play, iTunes, Amazon, uh, Xbox. I forget what the Xbox one's called. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I don't think it has an official name anymore. I think just say it's on Xbox. Xbox. (laughs) Yeah, it's on Xbox. Um, Yeah, it's going to be across the board and... Hopefully, we'll get some more release options soon. Uh, is it going to be doing any showings in uh, cons or film festivals? Um, not that I know of. Um, but I will keep everyone updated on my Instagram. I'm pretty sure that you're not doing any festivals. Okay. Uh, what What is your social media tag so people can follow uh, you? Yeah, it's just my name, Jacqueline, J-A-C-L-Y-N, last name, Ethan, B-E-T-H-A-N.